Richard Davis, unique individual, inventor, nice guy. Why would he shoot himself more than 180 times? Three, two, one. What was once an abandoned cement plant and open pit mine is being turned into one of the most unique developments in North America. Now all that is hand? Yes. You, yes. you stitched all that? Yes. By yes. hand? Yes. Works of art that keep you warm. That's what Thelma Thomas of Kalkaska creates. You're looking at a giant building-sized masterpiece mural in downtown Flint. It was recently saved from the wrecking ball. We'll find out how and why. Where would people be without places to enjoy? And what would a place be like without the unique and interesting people that give it character? This is People and Places with Perry. How much of history are you willing to save? When it comes to this wall of history, a lot of people in Flint work very hard to save it from the wrecking ball. Greg Fiedler of the Greater Flint Arts Council gave us the lowdown about this famous mural. We're downtown Flint behind the Bill Thomas Halo Burger, uh, which is right next door to the Verner's mural. Greg, this thing was almost lost a while back when the Peerless Furniture Store burned down, right? That's right. They had a fire there and uh, they decided to build a new store out on Miller Road and they were going to demolish this building. And since then, you've gone through a fundraiser, you've raised a bunch of money, you've saved not only the mural but also the building. That's correct. Uh, we have enough money to purchase the building, and that'll save it from demolition. So what happens next? What are you going to do with the building? Well, the Greater Flint Arts Council is going to move into the building. The, uh, the committee to save the Verner's mural asked us if we would be the residents and the owners of the building, and, and they're going to raise the funds and turn it all over to the Greater Flint Arts Council. So an action that got us to save a piece of history, this beautiful mural, has now turned into that, plus we're going to get an art center. That's right. We'll have a downtown art center. Sounds like a winner to me all the way around. <laughs> I couldn't have asked for more. Now this is a one-of-a-kind, unique mural. You can't find this anywhere else in the country. Nowhere else. It's an original work of art. Of course, you can't find Verner's too many places in this country. <laughs> <laughs> Verner's is very heavily distributed in the Midwest and very much in demand everywhere else. <laughs> Halo Burger occupies the same parking lot as the Verner's mural. Terry Thomas, who owns Halo Burger, gave us some insight and history about the Verner's mural from his side of the parking lot. Now, Halo Burger, where we're sitting right now, is uh, used to be Verner's, correct? The, the, the company that made Verner's. That's correct. We, uh, we bought the building in 1951 from the Verner's family. My father did. And um, then it's been in our family ever since. Well, you've got some uh, historical pictures here, starting with this one. Uh, why don't you explain what we're looking at here? The, the building hasn't changed a whole lot, has it? Well, it really hasn't. We've tried to uh, keep it as much as, uh, as close to it, the original uh, as we can, other than the interior. You know, we've, cha we've changed a few times with our serving counter and so on and so forth. And uh, you had something to say about this old Werner sign you were telling us a few minutes ago. Uh, when you were a little kid, remember that from being a little kid, right? Yes, when my father took the building over in 1951, I was intrigued by the sign that Werner's people had. In fact, I don't know why it always is stuck in my mind as being the, 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 the sharpest sign I ever saw with the Werner's of the lights lighting up in the Werner's bottle and the lights going into the Werner's glass and it looked like the it was the bottle was empty and then the glass was filling up and then the lights would go out and it would repeat that and I always remember that and that's going back a few years. Now in this last photo that you have for us today this is after it's uh, been turned from Verner's to QP hamburgers and that's what used to be called QP before Halo Burger? That's true when my dad went to work in the late 30s uh, on a small operation down on Harrison Street where it all began it was called QP Hotels. I know you guys are selling these mugs here to help promote that wall out there uh, what's the story on that? Well, that's true, uh, Perry. We, uh, over the years, have uh, put a lot of money into the wall to keep it, and uh, we were devastated, of course, when the fire came along, and we thought we were going to lose the wall. Um, and uh, when the Urban Walls Committee and the volunteers got involved to save it, we were very happy they were able to do that, and we've now have come out with these mugs, and we're going to hopefully contribute at least $5,000 to the restoration of the wall by selling these mugs. Well, I think it's a great idea. It's a, it's a way to put that Verner's mural right in your cupboard. Well, buddy, here's to you and all your friends. Hope you folks are here for many years to come. More people to meet and places to see, next. 
We stopped in Kalkaska to talk with Thelma Thomas about her quilting and her husband Basil's unique hobbies. Thelma immediately sent us to the senior center to watch her husband roller skate and shoot pool with his buddy George. After a few turns in the cafeteria, Basil and George invited me to shoot a little pool. So Basil, how often do you guys come down here to the senior center? Every day, except Saturday and Sunday. Shoot a lot of pool? Shoot a lot of pool. How's Basil? He's the best in town. He's best in town? Yeah. Basil is? Yeah. Especially when they get down to a few balls left while well, he's... No, uh, we don't call our shots on the eight ball like most places do. Well, so-and-so got this in, so-and-so got that in. <laughs> I think I wear these all the time down here. Being over 70 sure hasn't slowed down Basil. We tore ourselves away from this exciting game and headed to Thelma's. <clears throat> it's called Windy City, and I thought I wanted to make it. After I got into it, I kind of wondered why. It's kind of like putting a Chinese puzzle together. When you see what Thelma can make with just a needle, thread, cloth, and a whole lot of patience, it makes you feel like you're looking at art in progress and not just a quilt. Uh, my brother-in-law told me I had probably as much time in that as his daughter who received the quilt had in actual school work when she went to college. <laughs> but now do you sell these or, or sell them and give them away? How, how do you Mostly I give them to family. I wonder if the people Thelma has given quilts to have any idea how valuable they are and how much of her is sewn into them. If a, if a quilt is uh, an heirloom quilt, they say not to put it in a washer or dryer. Um, wash that in a bathtub and, so that there's not a lot of weight to pull the threads to break them on an old quilt. But I figure when I first make them, if they don't hold up to a washer and dryer, I didn't do a very good job of it. So Who, who taught you how to do this? Back well, I'm pretty or? much... No, nobody. <clears throat> just picked it up on your own? Yes. It's mostly just knowing how to sew a straight seam. And um, the more you sew, the smaller the stitches get. And um, I always admired quilts. I figured the only way I'd get any was to make them because my mother wasn't a quilt maker. She crocheted, so uh, I just enjoy it. You have a favorite? Favorite quilt you've put together? Probably the Dresden plate. I uh, put the most time on that. You can really see a lot of detail in Yes, this. I think there's probably a couple of miles of quilting in that. I'm not sure. What, what is this called where you make the ripple effect? It's just uh, echo quilting. Now all that is hand? Yes. You, yes. you stitched all that? Yes. By <laughs> hand? Yes. Took me about six months on that quilt. It oh was, my. My niece graduated summa cum laude from Adrian, and I figured she should have something to honor the well, I accomplishment. Guess, I and guess that's got, quite the honor. She got you her won't be able master's. to move your hands again for a couple of years. <laughs> she got her master's degree this last year, and I made her pillow shams that matched her quilt. So. I hope she never has kids that drink grape juice on this <laughs> stuff. <laughs> these were both blue ribbon winners. This both one's these. called Card Tricks. And this one was hand pieced, this one was machine pieced, but they were both hand quilted. This one I didn't put in a um, contest of any kind. I got this out of a Better Homes and Garden quilt book. It's called Sickle, and I just like the contrast and colors. I like this one. I, that, yeah. That's appealing. I like these yeah. two right here, I think are my favorites. Are they? Yeah, they, they have a neat look to them. Yeah, this one is just a a fun quilt for a kid. They like stars and, well, oh, I guess yeah. it's... Uh, planets? Planets, planets, yes. What I was trying to think of. That's a neat color, isn't it? Mm -hmm. That blue. It has the stars on the back. You don't get cold at night, do you? No, no, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> but and when, you're, when, and when you're not quilting, of course, Basil is playing the bones. What's that all about? See, and then you just... Let it rip, Basil. I don't know about you, but visiting Thelma and Basil is like turning back the hands of time in a good way. People and places will continue. I like it though.
If you like a beautiful shoreline, forests, golfing on world-class courses, boating, and many other activities too numerous to mention, I guess you're going to love Bay Harbor. We're in the marketing center, and we found David Johnson, who heads up this operation. And David, how are you? I'm doing great. Why don't you give us your official title? I'm chairman of Bay Harbor Company. You're the chairman. You're the, you're the big cheese then, right? Well, 50-50 um, partners with CMS Energy, Bill McCormick, who's chairman of that. And uh, I guess I'm responsible for day-to-day -day activity. Now, is this a local operation, or is it uh, uh, drawn in from a number of areas around the state? Uh, well, uh, Bay Harbor has an international draw. We have purchasers from Hamburg, Germany, and throughout the United States. Um, so we're off to a great start, and uh, we're excited and thrilled with the progress that we've made. This particular site was an abandoned cement plant that has been attempted to be developed for the last three decades. And uh, it was uh, uh, they worked on it hard in the 1980s and were unable to pull it off. And when we came along and worked with the community uh, very intensely over the last three years and with the state of Michigan and the Army Corps of Engineers and the DNR, uh, everything lined up and everybody's on board and, and uh, it's all been a positive experience. Now about a year ago you made big news when you blasted a wall in the quarry. It used to be a quarry here or a, a big pit that's now the harbor? Uh, March 10th uh, in 1995 we filled up what is now Bay Harbor Lake, a million gallons a minute, a uh, total of 2.5 billion gallons. And, and uh, we really started July 12th of 94 with the blowing up of cement uh, towers for the demolition of the abandoned cement plant that was here. What's, what's been an exciting experience is uh, putting the resources back together from a piece of land that was scarred for many years by a mining operation and now putting it back together into one of the more beautiful sites what the governor uh, uh, John Engler calls the crown jewel of Michigan so uh, we're thrilled with it we won the 1995 environmental achievement award in in the state of Michigan and it's been a great uh, journey well it was the dead of winter but even covered by snow and gripped by freezing cold you can see that this is going to be a one-of-a-kind place when they're done so do you view this as a, a, a retirement community, uh, a working community, a resort community, or all of the above? I, th I think that it's, uh, it's an overall community. I mean, it's really Bay Harbor, Michigan, and it's not very often you get to put a destination on a map. Yeah. Um, I think that what makes it unique is that it's master planned from the scratch, and you don't uh, have the ability to run into a piece of property that has five miles of frontage on Lake Michigan. Where, where we think that we have the advantage is that we're more than a resort in that we're a year-round community, that we teamed up with the Kircher family and the Boeing USA uh, to have the advantages of skiing in the wintertime. We have uh, seven miles of non-motorized nature trails and public parks on both ends for cross-country skiing and sn snowshoeing activities. Now, how about fitting into the local area, working with the other communities? Are you, are you kind of snuggling right up against and working with uh, uh, everybody else in the area so that uh, uh, things stay the same as they are in those communities and also will benefit you folks here? We, we've worked very hard to fit in. Uh, we worked uh, very hard for a long time before we even submitted our master plan uh, to, with Resort Township in Emma County and with the City of Petoskey and with Charlevoix Merchants Association, all the different people to be complementary to what they're doing. And when this was approved in the 80s, it was approved for 5,000 units of development and we're at 800. And so we wow. radically downsized it. We upgraded the quality dramatically and we did what we said we were going to do, which was remove the uh, scarred up land in the cement plant and, and restore the property. And so our track record is, is outstanding with the people and we've worked very hard. We've, uh, they've put in long hours, we've put in long hours. The state is happy, the DNR is happy. And From frigid winter to the bloom of spring to the warmth of summer and the cool color of fall, Bay Harbor looks very beautiful. I'm excited that Bay Harbor is a reality. It doesn't matter whether I'm here or not. In the, in the long run, Bay Harbor, Michigan is a reality, and we want everybody to come and see it and, and uh, experience it. And we, we think that it's a, one of the most exciting places in the United States. No matter what season you choose, the common denominator at this resort community is first-class beauty. We'll be right back.
Central Lake is not the kind of town you'd expect to find a bulletproof vest factory in. We came here to learn about Second Chance Body Armor and its unique inventor, Richard Davis. I, okay, I did not invent body armor. Body armor w was invented by Uglug the caveman back about literally a half a million years ago. <laughs> and they, they found evidence of coconut shells and vines in the Neanderthal days, and where they, they put vines with coconut shells and stuff on it and to uh, ward off the uh, you know slings and arrows, whatever, of uh, the other tribe. Of course, then the other tribe would come up with the longer, sharper spears, and the first tribe would come back with thicker coconut shells, and the war has been going on ever since. So, so what I did, uh, and the kindest thing anyone ever said about me was uh, Masad Ayub, a gun writer. Uh, he, he compared me uh, very favorably to, to Henry Ford I in that uh, Henry Ford I did not invent the automobile. Uh, Dammler Benz had done that, uh, you know, all, about 15 years before. What Henry Ford did, he made this stuff practical and for the everyday guy to, to buy and use. And I, well, I didn't invent body armor. What I did, I did create concealable soft body armor. The incredible material that makes these vests stop bullets is DuPont Kevlar 129. It's five times stronger than an equal amount of steel. Uh, Kevlar yarn, just the thread, is made either by DuPont Company or by the uh, Axo Company, and uh, they produce the yarn, just the thread, and then the thread is woven by various different weavers, and then uh, they send it to us, and we uh, turn the fabric into a wearable body armor. Second Chance Body Armor has saved the lives of over 640 people. Some of the people Second Chance Body Armor has saved end up having kids. Richard calls these kids second chance babies. Here's the, here's the basically our, the ins, this is the guts of the heart of the whole matter. This is our monarch vest, and we've got the unique thing, we've we got this patented all the heck and gone. Got, we've got about a total of uh, eight patents here. So this and, is how thick and, it is. Uh, yeah, eight, eight U.S. patents, and if we uh, get a thousand more, we'll be up with Edison, so I, <laughs> it puts me in my place, I think. Uh, this is, yeah, basically this is a unique thing about Monarch, we call it the butterfly light construction, there's two different panels here, and that, uh, with, you notice the stitching is, is uh, diamond here and square there, and the embarrassing thing here is we don't, this works better, and we're not really sure why, that it works better than two diamond stitchings or two, two square stitchings, but it works better, and it works better from... Uh, the diamond side first, then the square side first. And again, we don't know why. And I was kind of embarrassed about this, well, but then I realized that, you know, Homo sapiens, we used uh, fire for about, uh, you know, half a million years before we understood the principles of combustion, before previously discovered oxygen and everything. So uh, this, and this, this adds about another one or two percent of the effectiveness of it. And uh, main thing, this thing is soft. You can just, uh, you know, roll stuff in a ball. And it's quite light. Oh, yeah. And the trick is, you know, all the vests basically work. The trick is to get you to wear this thing and, you know, two, three, four years from now when you don't think you're going to be shot. And that's what, when it seems to happen. How do Richard's employees feel about working here and making their life-saving product? When you talk quality control in our business, it's more than an open seam or a raw edge on a shirt that can be returned. It uh, means that a man or a woman can uh, get up the next morning and have breakfast with her family or his family and, and see their kids grow up. So it is, uh, it's very satisfying. How do you feel about saving people's lives and being a part of that? I feel very fortunate to be able to be a part of it and be a part of it for 20 years. It's very important to me. That's why I've been here for so long. So right. it's more than just a job. Right, right. It's nope. like my family. And, and a lot of family members working here, huh? Right. Mm-hmm. Second Chance sends their finished vest to people all over the world. Well, it must be kind of neat to know that you can invent a product that will actually go out and save lives. Mm. Here we have some rounds, bullets, hollow points. They're going into uh, Richard's 44 caliber. And then Richard, you're going to do the deed here, right? Yeah, I know what you're thinking, punk. <laughs> well, here we go. Any thoughts about uh, people watching this uh, so they yeah, don't attempt uh, to try this well, at home? For, for God's sakes, don't do this at home on your own. Talk about standing behind your product. Well, I got to tell you, Richard, this is making me nervous. It goes against everything I've been yeah. taught about handguns. Well, me too. But we're we're ready. <laughs> it truly, it truly is an unnatural act. Uh, so it's it's not. I don't enjoy it really, but uh, I've never turned down anybody requesting me to, to do it for him. So well, you uh, don't mind me standing back a little right. bit? <laughs> I thought you were going to stand behind here. I uh, know. <laughs> I'll stand in front of you. Okay. You know, it's a unique grip here. You turn it upside down. If you, first time I ever did it, I did it like this. And the, the, the forcing cone has a huge blast. It comes out and tattooed my wrist here real bad. But uh, if you do it upside down like this, you don't get the muzzle blast on you. So, uh, okay. Uh, true. 
three, two, one. And that's it. Yeah. Oh my so, gosh. Now, I'm perfectly capable of returning fire right now and, uh, you know, about man to kill somebody, so. Now, does that hurt? Yeah, yeah. I can't believe I just asked someone who shot himself with a 44, did it hurt? Second Chance continues to research ways to make their body armor more wearable, breathable, light, and thin. Because like Richard says, you have to wear it to save your life. If you're in law enforcement, you've got a friend in Richard Davis and his Second Chance body armor. This guy is serious about his product. Well, that's our show. Thanks for watching People in Places. I'm Perry Wright. The to town this morning in Central Lake. You guys, are these bulletproof? Sure. Are they? Oh, yeah. <laughs> stop a lot. They'll, They'll stop a lot, yeah, they? They can, they can well. stop a semi-truck, too. You'd once be, in a while. You'd be huh? surprised. Yeah. But in, in, every once in a while, uh, someone in a family car, they won't stop. They just come buzzing by. They don't shut <laughs> up and stop. <laughs> they don't shut up and stop. In fact, they don't even slow down, nope. do they? Nope. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, do uh, you think you ever need a bulletproof mask in downtown Central Lake? No, I don't think so. If you have an idea for people and places, send us a card to P.O. Box 310-875, Flint, Michigan, 48531.